Good afternoon. In the first term, we went through the chapter of word formation. We had learned some prefixes and suffixes which can change the part of speech of a word. Today, we are going to talk more about prefixes. In this lesson, you will learn some prefixes that carry their own meanings and how they can make a new word. So, let's get started. Before talking about prefixes, let me tell you a story. A story about the origin of English. English is a language that is spoken by the English people, of course. However, English is actually not the first language that was spoken in the British Isles. Although England is often considered as a part of Europe, the British Isles is actually isolated from the European continent. Around the 8th century, a group of Celtic people moved to England, brought along with their language. As the earliest inhabitants in Britain, they are known as the Britons. They spoke common Britonic, a Celtic language that barely related with modern English. The development of the English language began in the 5th century, when Germanic people started to make the short journey across the North Sea. Three major Germanic tribes, known as the Angles, Saxons and Jutes, settled in the east coast of England. They spoke a number of Western Germanic dialects, over time, these people were known as the Anglo-Saxons. Soon, they displaced the native Celts and controlled most of England. The Anglo-Saxons spoke Anglisk, which is also known as Old English. Old English is a very complex language. Nouns had three genders. There were seven classes of strong verbs and three classes of weak verbs and their endings changed for number, tense, mood, and person. Adjectives could have up to 11 forms. You can obviously see how different Old English and Modern English are from this photo. By the late 8th century, the Vikings from modern Denmark, Norway, and Sweden began to make raids on the east coast of Britain. The Vikings soon settled in the British Isles. The Vikings spoke Old Norse, an early North Germanic language. Over time, Old Norse was gradually merged into the English language, and many terms from Old Norse were introduced. In all, up to a thousand Norse words were added to the English lexicon. Among them, some of the most common and basic in the language, including knife, back, and skin. The event that began the transition from Old English to Middle English was the Norman conquest of 1066. In 1066, the Norman landed in England and defeated the Anglo-Saxons. The Normans spoke a rural dialect of French with considerable Germanic influence, also known as Norman French, which was quite different from the standard French of Paris. Anglo-Norman's French became the language of the kings and nobility of England for more than 300 years and lower classes continued to speak English. The mixture of Old English and Norman French that is usually referred to as Middle English. The Normans left over 10,000 words to English, including a large number of abstract nouns with these suffixes. The Hundred Years' War against France had an effect on the status of the French language in England. The status of English began to rise as a result. 
in 1362, English was made the official language of England. During this period, words from Latin or Greek were borrowed by the English language. For example, focus, radius, and genius. And large number of prefixes and suffixes were borrowed. Moreover, the great playwright William Shakespeare personally coined it and estimated 2,000 new words in as many works. He also introduced countless phrases in common use today, such as Brave New World and Love is Blind. All these important developments began the transition to modern English. The industrial and scientific advances of the Industrial Revolution created a need to describe the new creations and discoveries. This relied on the classical languages, Latin and Greek. This led to the creations of words like oxygen, protein, nuclear, and vaccine. Although these words did not exist in the classical languages, they were created from Latin and Greek roots. To find out the origin of a word, you could use the Google search engine. Simply looking up the word on Google, you will see the origin of it. This brings a lot of fun when you are learning some new vocabularies. Okay, so let's look at some Latin and Greek prefixes. The prefix uni, which means one, is an important prefix in the English language. Maybe the easiest way to remember that uni means one is through the word unicorn, or a magic horse that has one horn. Let's see how this prefix works with more than just one example. The word uniform means clothes which give one shape to all. The word unique describes something which has only one example. And the word union means that the making of one from different parts. And here we have the prefix co. Co basically means together. For example, co-education means the educations of boys and girls together. The word cooperates simply means working together. The word coactions means the actions or process of working or acting together. And the word collaborations means a process of two or more people working together to complete a task. And we have the prefix hydro. Hydro means water in Greek. The word hydroelectrics refers to the generations of electricity using flowing water. The word hydrology refers to the study of the distributions and movement of water. And the word hydrolysis means a chemical reactions of the interactions of chemicals with water. Finally, we have hydroplane, which refers to a very fast motorboat. Last but not least, we have another Greek prefix, auto, which means self. An easy way to remember that the prefix auto means self is through the word automatic, which means a process doing something by itself. The word autograph means signature written by a person, his or herself. The word autobiography means a life history written by the subject person herself. And finally, the word autopilot means a setting on a plane where the plane can fly itself. Alright, today we have talked about the history of English and some prefixes with Latin and Greek origin. I hope you will have a better experience of learning English vocabularies in the future. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.